Hi everybody and welcome to today's LEGO Technic video. Over the last three or four weeks I've been presenting many different experiments with the aim of designing a two-speed automatic gearbox that can be used in an actual car or vehicle. Uh, so today I'm putting together all that knowledge and I've come up with a single design that incorporates all those ideas and I'll be presenting that to you today. Okay, so what does an automatic gearbox look like anyway? Well, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, over here we've got our input, we've got a gear selector, we've got a torque detector and our output. Uh, what the torque detector does is it detects the torque on the output then feeds that back to the gear selector which then selects one of several possible output gears. Uh, for example, in the case of a two-speed automatic gearbox, you'd have your first gear and a secondary gear that switches down to a lower gearing ratio in order to create more torque on the output. Now, there's a few de uh, decisions that need to be made. One is what is the correct level of torque at the output in order to switch those gears, and what should the gear ratio be uh, that the gear selector chooses between going from gear one to gear number two. Okay, so in order to answer those two questions, um, I'll show you here this graph that I've presented a few times in the past, and so this shows you the relationship between the torque and the speed of a large power functions motor and what you find is as the torque increases the speed decreases linearly like this and you can also plot the power curve shown by this orange line here going like this and it kind of starts low and it has a peak around 2 watts and then decreases again and that peak occurs around 10 uh, newton centimeters of torque which is equivalent to a speed of around 200 rpm so from this graph here we can show uh, a good place to, um, to switch gears from using the torque detector and that would be around this point. So if we want to keep our output power above sort of an ideal peak of 80% then this would be the ideal switching point that the torque detector would have to activate in order to switch the gear back down to this point to keep the power at that 80%. So that tells us that the torque detector should activate at a, a newton centimetre torque of about 15 or a speed of about 100 rpm on the motor and then switch back to this point which is about uh, 5 newton centimeters of torque so that implies a gearing ratio between this uh, going from 15 down to 5 so that means the gear selector has to switch by a ratio of about one third from uh, gear 1 to gear 2 so gear 1 would be a 1 to 1 ratio and gear 2 would be one third to drop us back down to that level over here where the torque has been decreased um, and the motor speed has increased so what's a good way of selecting gears? Well one mechanism LEGO provides is a gear selector like this. Um, you're probably all familiar with this one. So what allows you to do is switch between driving two different gears, one on the left and one on the right using the driving axle. Now the problem with this particular gearing mechanism is that it passes through a neutral point in the middle. And when it passes through that neutral point both these gears are disengaged. And what that would mean is for the automatic gearbox as soon as you pass through that neutral point the torque detector will detect no torque because it's disengaged and it'll uh, try to switch back to uh, first gear and then as soon as it does that it'll, it'll try to switch back to second gear so it'll end up sort of chattering between gears and it uh, doesn't work in practice. Okay so one way around this problem is to use a differential and what this allows us to do is to create um, two different paths from the input to output that are added up with the differential like this. Uh, along the top path we've got, uh, got a gearing ratio of A, on the bottom path we've got a gearing ratio of B and that path is switched using a, like a regular switch like this and what this means is that even when this is disconnected we've still got the main path providing traction to the output uh, of the of the system where the torque detector is uh, provided that on this path here we use a worm gear to make sure there's no back driving uh, through this disconnected axle here so for example the great thing about a worm gear is you can drive it uh, for example from this direction here and that will drive this axle but if this one's disconnected, you can't drive it backwards through this axle. So this is kind of connected um, on the differential like this. So that um, we can switch this and drive the differential, but the differential can't drive backwards and lose that traction. So this differential solution allows us two ways of creating a secondary gear. We can either connect this axle to the differential or disconnect the axle. So in this case, if we're trying to create a gear 1 gearing ratio of 1 and a gear 2 gearing ratio of 1 third, then if we're going to be disconnecting the axle, we'd have to have A equals to 1 third, and B equals to 2 thirds, because 1 third plus 2 thirds equals 1. And then when we disconnect to switch to gear 2, that would just leave the 1 third overall uh, gearing ratio. On the other hand, if we want to uh, connect uh, those axles in order to create a new uh, gearing ratio, and we want to go from 1 down to 1 third, then in that case we'd have to have A equal to 1 
the b equals to minus two thirds or counter rotating and then we got one minus two thirds will leave a third now there are advantages and disadvantages of connecting or disconnecting your axles when you're switching gears and uh, the advantage of connecting is that it's actually uh, simpler in practice uh, so when you are connecting uh, you're not having to overcome the torque that you need to overcome when you're disconnecting however you are creating a more complex gearing mechanism you've got two paths that need to be added up and you end up with more losses um, however the advantage of disconnecting is like I said it is simpler but it does create more of a, uh, a torque issue trying to disconnect so like I said as the loading increases on the output of the gearbox it does become more difficult to disengage the switch when you're trying to switch gears and one way around that or to mitigate that problem is to increase the speed of the axle that's running on this and what that will do will actually decrease the torque and when you've got a decreased torque it becomes easier to disengage the switch so that's a good idea when you're designing an automatic gearbox to disengage um, the switch at a higher speed and a lower torque okay so that was the discussion about the gear selector so in terms of torque detection uh, one common method is to use a differential like this and what we've got here is we've got our input over there we've got our output and in between we have a differential that's used for the torque detection now the differential is connected through this gear here to a rubber band mechanism that stops that sender from turning or at least the resistance from turning so what happens is when you turn the input the output will rotate like that however as soon as there's some resistance or loading on that output uh, what will happen is that the uh, force will instead of being transferred to the output will start being applied to the center and that is what allows you to detect the torque on the output and we'll start seeing that movement of the center and that uh, red uh, thin lift arm can be used to uh, as the gear switching mechanism so this is one way of detecting and reacting to torque on the output now one issue with the torque detector if you put it directly on the output path that you will experience relatively large losses due to this torque detector because that center has to overcome this rubber band so as there is some loading on the output that will start to turn and there's a, a certain amount of torque that's being generated by this rubber band that is countering uh, your output torque and they pretty much simply subtract so there's actually uh, quite a lot of loss there and one way around that is to create a two path output system so this would be the second stage of your gearbox after the gear selector and again here we've got our input we've got our output and we've created two different paths that get added up with a differential now the path uh, at the top here has got gearing ratio A and path at the bottom has got gearing ratio B and what you find is if you go through and do the mathematics you'll find that the ratio of the uh, power traveling through path A relative to path B is A over A plus B so what that means for example if you make this um, a gearing ratio of 9 tenth and this 1 tenth um, that means that the amount of power traveling through path A will be 9 out of um, 10 or well, uh, 90% and along the bottom path will be 10% so what that means is that you can put the torque detector on the path with the least amount of power transfer and that means that the losses are severely reduced by that ratio so the amount of power that you're going to be losing um, relative uh, to the overall power is relatively small if the torque detector on, is on path B so that's a good way of reducing the power loss uh, due to your torque detector in an automatic at least switching gearbox all right finally the moment you've been waiting for the actual implementation of this gearbox design in this prototype automatic gearbox uh, what i've got is i've got stage one over here and stage two over there so stage one being the gear selector and stage two being the torque detector mechanism uh, so stage one over here I have got our um, switching selector over here and that is driven by this orange rotary catch in order to disengage so in this case I've decided to disengage the gears in order to create a second gear um, what I've got here is a 28 to 8 gearing ratio that then speeds up the speed of this axle so that is ideal for reducing the torque on that switching mechanism uh, that then passes through underneath a worm drive that drives this gear here which goes through that differential um, and to go into stage two and along the top path we've got that one-third gearing ratio so what that means is that the overall gearing ratio for gear one uh, is that one-third plus the overall gearing ratio of the bottom part and that gearing ratio if we do the math is uh, 28 over 8 times 1 over 8 for the worm gear 20 to 28 driving the differential then times 2 uh, for the differential equation which gives us a gearing ratio of about 40 to 64 or about two thirds for this path here and then the top path like I said is one third so two thirds plus one third 
gives us an overall gearing ratio of 1 uh, to this point here and then once we disengage that uh, pass 2 we're simply left with 1 third so we're switching between 1 and 1 third as our two different gearing ratios okay so stage 2 is the torque detector mechanism so it's on the right here so that's that torque detector on the diagram uh, so the output of stage 1 comes through this axle here that um, goes straight into the summing differential the other path is through the bottom path where the torque detector is and like I showed before with that power diagram we've got a, uh, a down gearing here of, of 1 ninth so we've got a 1 third and a 1 third passing through the torque detector which when it gets activated will switch the gears like this or disengage that um, gearing mechanism on the left and all that is summed up through the um, like I said through the differential to give us our overall output and that output is connected to my uh, torque creation mechanism so this mechanism allows me to create different output torques to test the gearbox with okay let's turn it on and see what happens okay so that's sounding pretty good uh, what I'll start with is a speed measurement on the left here I've got my tachometer I'll just take a measurement of the motor speed um, let's see how that looks okay so that is looking pretty good it's 355 rpm it's normally 380 unloaded that tells me it's losing about a quarter of a watt of energy just in the gearing mechanism uh, unloaded. Uh, I will now try to load up the system so we can see we're in uh, gear one. And if that's disengaged, we'll be moving to gear two. So just keep an eye on the torque detector when we add some loading on the output. So we get a level one of torque, and that immediately wow slows down the gearbox dramatically. It's uh, it's trying to switch gears. It's really struggling. Uh, if that does pop out that means we'll be in gear 2 uh, we can see okay alright so now the motor is pretty much stalled so it's really struggling if I do push it manually to switch gears oh, it's almost very difficult but look at that when we do switch gears uh, we are now seeing us being in gear 2 uh, at one third of the speed uh, that is now pretty powerful. Uh, I can add more torque to the output and it's not struggling at all. But it really did struggle to switch that gears. Um, unfortunately, it is very difficult to switch this um, rotary catch on that switch simply because of that torque that I talked about. So what I'll try to do now is I'll increase the torque on this by um, changing the gearing on the, on the input motor. Uh, so bear with me, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've just added a 1 to 3 gearing ratio on the input of the motor. That means the overall torque across the entire system should have increased by a factor of 3, uh, allowing a lot more torque on the output and uh, more torque on that uh, gear switching mechanism to be able to switch more easily. So, just see what happens. We'll turn it on. Um, we can see we're in uh, first gear. The output is turning relatively fast. Uh, the torque detector is not detecting a lot of torque. I'll just add one level of torque, I uh, can handle that fairly easily now, you can hear the motor start to slow down and the uh, torque detector starting to move trying to switch gears uh, we'll go to level 2 uh, it's now struggling and look at that, it's just switched gears uh, it's a lot more powerful at the output, we can now see that just path 1 is being used, the torque detector is not, not seeing a lot of movement so that just shows there's not a lot of power loss, we've pretty much got a direct path to the output and uh, we can add a lot of torque to the output now which is great to see uh, some of the gearboxes I've done in the past uh, because the path became more complex they actually uh, reduced the amount of output torque so I've now added 5 levels, 6 levels, 7 levels and there's no problem there uh, I'll just decrease the torque again on the output and then we should see the gearing mechanism switch back uh, to gear 1 uh, we can see it's starting to uh, want to move back to gear 1 and as soon as we go back to very little torque it pops back and we're now back in gear one with a higher speed on the output so i think that's relatively successful uh probably still a little bit um, difficult switching that gear trying to disengage that switch is uh, is quite a problem still and so in the future i'm looking to uh, look at different disengagement mechanisms but in the meantime i think this has been relatively successful thank you for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video and please like and subscribe we'll see you next time